DVD. See it. Buy it. Own it. Spend hours watching extras beyond the movie. Build a collection for the family. Over 9,000 movies to own. It's the most convenient way to watch a movie. DVD. Next up, Russ and I are going to talk about the state of physical media. If you agree that physical meaning dying out is just another reminder of your mortal life coming to an end, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> and if they'll have to pry your collection out of your cold, dead hands upon your funeral, <laughs> click that like. Actually, it's a lot like that. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was something that had kind of been on my mind for a little while, because some people had been messaging us on the side and kind of asking our opinion on things like some of these disc delays that have been going on with like lately in certain studios that we've covered and recalls and, and um, disc replacement programs and stuff like that. And kind of wanted to know like what our thoughts were. And I thought maybe we could take it just one step further and just talk a little bit about where we are in general with physical media, because I think so much I feel like has even changed in the time that we've started this channel. A lot has changed from the time when I started collecting movies, however many, 20 years ago. There's obvious points that we're all aware of, like it isn't what it used to be financially, and there isn't as much support for it as there once was. I think that's a given. But I think there's a lot of other little ebbs and flows that are kind of going on that are that are just kind of interesting to take a look at. I started I started collecting back in 2001, and so it was about 20 years ago at this point. I started uh, 2000, 2001. Yeah. I mean, that's when DVD players kind of hit. We're in the middle of one of the largest and most successful consumer electronics introductions right now with a product called DVD. Yes, this is the new wave of the future. Isn't this the way the industry is going to go? That's right. And this is the product. Sony has introduced this. This is the Model 7000. And by all accounts, it's the best that's on the market. DVDs came out in 1997, and I bought my first one in 2001. I got a DVD player for Christmas of 1999. I didn't know what it was. DVD. Yeah. And at that time, I remember I went to a store to buy DVDs for this. All they had was The Wizard of Oz, Austin Powers and The Matrix. Those were literally the only three titles. Yeah. So I had to buy The Matrix. DVD. You know, Blu-ray and then HD DVD came out um, mm -hmm. like almost 10 years later. You're not getting the full HD TV experience until you get HD DVD. And I HD was DVD like, was actually superior. I forget the actual technical aspects of it, of it, but it was. It was yeah. the superior format. But what ha it was? Well, it was PlayStation again. That kind of PlayStation, and I yeah. think porn also. I think that, that was always it. that's what happened yeah. with VHS and Beta. Yep, I'm pretty sure that was that was a thing too. It was like that was the the format that they went with. That was the first format change in ten years. It mm -hmm. came out in 2006. I bought my first Blu-ray in 2007, and that was also the first time where you had to buy like a new TV. The cash is easy to get. Get a chain shit, and that was the first time where it was like, damn, this is a commitment. And then 4K, which is the most recent format, is 10 years after that in 2016. And again, you got to buy a new player, a new TV. It's like a whole new technology upgrade one more time. Ah, oh, fuck. I got on with 4K like immediately and I got on with it like the same year it came out. It came out in 2016, February. I got on it April 2016. My first movie I bought was The Revenant, which is still to this day the best looking 4K release I think I even own. But at the time, it felt really shaky because there were the same like 10 4K releases <laughs> for like months. Like yeah. there was nothing. Dude, it was forever until new releases would come out and you would maybe get like a new, you know, 4K release, but it wasn't like anything from the past. It was just new stuff. Was it? That was I... it. it felt really <clears throat> slow and there really wasn't too much coming out. And I thought it was like, okay, is this format going to catch on at all? But you know, fast forward, I feel like it really has caught on. Because it's awesome. My next kind of question is more like, where do you think it goes from here if it does at all? Like, have we met the, like, finished point where we don't need 8K? Like, 4K is the final resting place of physical media. Sadly, I think so. I wish I was dead! Oh! I think so, too, and I'm not bothered by that. Because I feel like even the concept and notion of an 8K anything, I feel like it's diminishing returns no matter what. Yeah. But there's like a whole there's a whole like science to it. Like mm -hmm. you need to be close to the closer to the television to really experience 4K. Whereas 8K, you might even need to be closer. At some um, point, I'm just going to be on set while they film. Yeah, it. I just need to be there. At some point, we're just going to go back to stage, please. Ain't nothing wrong with that. The writing is on the wall. We, we just got done discussing Miami Connection on 4K. Mm -hmm. The titles that are being announced, they're 
geek titles. Yeah. They are cult titles. They are collector titles. It's a niche industry yeah. at this point. Definitely. And it's Vinegar Syndrome, it's Arrow, it's Scream. These are the ones keeping it alive. Yep. Once the collectors abandon that, it's done. Do you think we've passed our golden age? We're still in our, we're kind of like in our decline at this point. Well, it's interesting because now you have Criterion mm -hmm. jumping in 4K. You have Vinegar Syndrome doing 4K. Yep. It's a reason to celebrate movies from the past and upgrade and talk about them and keep them alive. As far as the market goes, I, yeah. I, I can't foresee it going anywhere else. Younger people don't care. They've grown up with streaming. Mm -hmm. They're fine with it. I'm gravely disappointed. And yeah. I, don't, I don't blame them. If yeah. I grew up with streaming, I may be that way myself. If this is physical media sort of like ending or swan song or whatever you want to call it, I do feel like we're in a good place with it right now. Like I, yeah. I don't, I, I think before we started doing this channel and before I really started paying attention to releases here and overseas and where, wherever else, I, I don't know that I felt the same way. But recently, just looking at a little bit deeper or closer, there are so many great studios that are still putting out really great stuff. All this is on the back of the boutiques and luckily people like Criterion who are still deciding to move forward with 4K mm -hmm. and when you're focusing on these films and you have this great packaging now and you have these great transfers and all the stuff that they are putting a lot of care and time into, it's what the bigger studios used to do that they just don't care to do anymore. And we're getting it on a smaller level, which I still like and I still appreciate. And I still think that it's going well. I don't, it doesn't oh, look yeah, like it's yeah, dead yeah. No. or even dying. It looks like it's maintaining within what it's like got mm -hmm. left. That's both flattering and, and embarrassing. <laughs> I think physical media abroad too is doing pretty well also I, I, I was, a lot, they of, get, a lot they of countries they get the best releases they do they do the best <laughs> releases and it shows that they at least have i don't know if it's more of a budget to do stuff or there's just more of an uh people want it more or they're they're clamoring for it more like i don't know what it is what, anybody, what's going on for yeah, them but anybody it's good. watching from europe let us know is, is the culture different there yeah. like, is physical media still a a thing there it has to be evaporating yeah. just like it is here but like you said, maybe there is still a little bit more of a stranglehold, yeah. a little bit more of an importance on it. Back in the day, I remember the, the experience was like almost like whenever I went to a Best Buy or somewhere, it was like every time I went, it was like a haul. It was like, let me go there and I'll pick up, you know, this on sale, this bang, bang, bang. It was like the earlier days of like collecting where that's not really yeah. what I'm doing anymore. Unless you're somebody who is still just buying titles to like fit onto your shelf. I'm only a kind of person I mean, who, there are people who do that. Absolutely. Oh, that's totally the case. I'm I'm someone who is only buying or rebuying things I'm truly passionate about at this time, whereas before, blind buy. Like, you know, it just didn't even matter. Yeah, I don't blind buy no. half as much as I used to. No, that's for yeah. sure. Good. I used to be a little bit more sadder than I was, to be honest. Like when we first yeah. again started this channel and we talked about it, and we, you know, you sit back and you think about like where physical media once was and where it is now. It's for us, it's for a very specific audience of people. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't even mind that. Like that's kind of cool to feel like there's something that's just for me now. Or, sure. you know, that's, that's kind of nice. DVD. There are obviously some things going on that are a little bit of like, you know, thorns in your side or kind of things that make you wince a little bit time to time with what some of these companies are doing to kind of whether it be squeeze out a buck or rush something through, or I know some of the things that people have been putting a lot of focus on lately is some of the disc recalls and the delays. It seems to happen pretty frequently. Yeah, it does. Criterion, I actually, I mean, I don't even know what to say for them. I mean, their very first release had a known issue. Um, Hard Target, I remember us talking about, Escape from LA, Mad Max. Demons. Um, Demons, yeah. Now, The Witch, which is we talked about on the second site is putting out, they put out sent out a notice to anybody that it ordered, as well as a tweet, they basically just said, hey, we are we need to delay this because we want to make sure we get you the best quality product possible. I appreciate that transparency. Yes, yes. Someone really is taking their time to get something to me the way that it should be or is quality checking this stuff. Obviously, maybe some of these studios, their budgets are a little smaller. Maybe they don't have the QC team like they used to have. That's bullshit. I mean, it's cool that they replace it. It's cool that they go back and do it. Yeah, I'm with you, though. It just, after a while, it's like, damn, how many times can you guys do this? Over and over. I know. I feel like I could run this better. I disagree. A couple of times, too, where we've covered stories that are, I think, American Werewolf in London was one of these cases. A couple of Scream Factory ones that we covered. Robocop, where, you know, Arrow specifically, and Scream Factory I've seen do it the most so far, where they're putting out 4K versions of something from the past, and they're not changing it at all. They're just mm -hmm. giving you the 4K disc inside. No new features, no new box, Dude, no nothing. Screen Factory is doing and it every week. I'm torn on one end thinking to myself, okay, these boutiques, these labels, whatever, they need the money, and this is clearly a way mm -hmm. for them to get money. 
But at the same time, these are the same companies that are supposed to be on my side in the physical media game that we still have left. So it feels like you're gouging what little is left. And that sometimes doesn't feel right now. There's, of course, people that didn't buy it the first time and good for them. But at the ba at the core of it, it just kind of stings a little bit. Relax. Just for once. Okay. Well, when you just said that, what it reminded me of is I remember when Criterion was putting out Breakfast Club. And if you would read any comments on that, oh, why is Criterion putting out Breakfast Club? This is yeah. bullshit. You know, it's not that. Well, they got to make some fucking money. They I mean, yeah, they do. They got to get funding somehow. You can't lay it all on like, just be righteous and virtuous yeah. all the time with money, the love of the open. art. Like but, you're doing that, but you got to keep the door. You got to keep the lights on too. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> and I just feel bad for those people out there that have to have it all and they have to drop like every single dime on it. And then you've got yeah. collector's edition restocks, which are, it's another like, yeah, that I hate that shit out of Dude, me. I freaking I hate that. that. I mean, we talked about true romance, but another thing that I saw, which I think is even crazier is Titans of Cult who are supposed to be limited completely, they put out this, one of their very first releases was Blade Runner. Highest on the aftermarket, one that you can get. They're putting it back out again. Once again, please. And I think it already resold out, but it's like, I thought this was limited. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, did I buy this movie because I like it? Sure. Did I buy this movie because it's a collector's item? Also sure. Did I buy this because I want to feel like my purchases have value and continue to increase? Great. Now all of a sudden you're going to put this stuff back out again. It's going to tank the value, if that's what I cared about, of this limited product that you told me was limited and it's not. It's false advertising. Yeah. Definitely. You're selling me something is limited. You know it's not. I think it's a dangerous precedent. And what if you're wrong? We talked about the sales like early on in the beginning, and I did want to just bring that up because I was kind of curious, and I did take a look at not, not dollar amount, but I was curious to see is DVD... Is Blu-ray, how is 4K like thriving amongst each other? Like what is this market even still? And obviously, like we said, the, the sales aren't what they were. It's it's just a niche market or a niche or niche, niche, niche. I'm not sure. Go with what you want. But you know, DVDs still have the highest share of the profits out of all three. With over 3,000 titles to choose from, make sure you see your next movie on DVD. DVD sales are actually increasing, whereas Blu-ray sales are decreasing. Why? They just don't care. The way it seems to be described is like you have this market where DVD is the most easily distributed and you can get, you know, basically anything on it and it's cheap as shit. It's like $9.99, $8.99, whatever it is. People that have not upgraded from DVD are not upgrading anytime soon. And this is like them now. And this is what they're going to get. Then you have Blu-ray, which is like in the middle. And then you have people like you and me who are the collectors who want the best possible thing that you can get, which is 4K and all this other stuff. So where does that leave Blu-ray? It like squeezes it out. It's like people that want value and don't give a shit are DVD. People like me and you want the best thing they can get, which is 4K. So eventually Blu-ray sales are starting to dip a little bit in combination with other things like there's no big blockbuster movies anymore to the way that they were because that drove a lot of home media sales. I think one of the biggest Blu-ray releases of late is like Endgame, you know, because that was like a huge thing in the in the theater and that drove a huge thing at home, but you don't get that anymore. So you don't have these big home releases for Blu-ray. It's just this like 4K, like niche market. Like when you look at the graphs, it's literally like a sandwich and Blu-ray is slowly getting smaller. It's like divided kind of the market where collectors want the best thing possible. Everybody else just wants value. Like that's it. And Blu-ray is no longer the cheapest or best option. So it's like, who's going for that one? The whole thing stinks like yesterday's diapers. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the only other like footnote that this article I was reading was saying, it's like, you know, streaming was really enhanced by COVID, but streaming was already there. COVID had come, decimated everything else. So you don't really have these people going to theaters. You don't have movies that are coming out that people want to see at home because everybody already has it at home with their streaming and everything else. And then so you have these big releases like Avengers that are driving a little bit. Then you have big re-releases like Godfather, Indiana Jones, Lord of the Rings that are keeping that sort of subset of the market alive. In general, when I looked at some of those graphs, everything looks like it's just moving along nicely. It's just the way that the, the trends are changing. It's very interesting to see. I haven't been more excited about collecting in a long time because it's awesome. I'm proud of physical media. I think it's still doing well. I'm still happy to be a collector till the day I die. And even if it does become niche, 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 niche. dude, this is our bread and butter. <laughs> I mean, we are the target. We are. And they're giving us the movies they know people like us want to collect. So, so keep on buying. Keep on supporting. Yeah. Tell them, Russ. Keep supporting physical media. <laughs>
on DVD. DVD. <laughs> yes, this is now a DVD channel. We're DVD kings again. 